Hello everyone, I'm Mark Soderstrom and welcome along to Bridgestone World Solar Challenge TV. And today's the day our champions have been crowned in the prestigious Clipsal and Schneider Electric Challenger class. Dutch team New on 7 has taken the honours ahead of Japan's Tokai. And let's take a look at how it all unfolded. Now remembering the end of timing was at the first set of traffic lights in Angle Vale, but to take the title, the winners had to make sure they had enough energy to get them all the way to the finish line here in Adelaide. Nuna 7 reached the end of timing at 10.03 this morning, officially completing the course in 33 hours and 5 minutes with a remarkable average speed of 90.71 kilometres an hour. They hit the finish line in Adelaide around midday. Uh, it's great. Driving into the city is an awesome feeling because you can see all the people looking at your car like, what's that alien-like uh, thing? And uh, we're, we're actually showing them that you can drive on solar energy through all of Australia and even in the city. It was quite a challenge. We've even had a flat tire and the Japanese were coming quite close, but in the end, we got to actually enlarge in our, uh, our position ahead and uh, finish first in, in Adelaide. So we we're very, very happy. We knew that we have very good aerodynamics and we had a couple of extra innovations which, which other teams did not have, such as concentrators, lenses, that focus the sun onto a very efficient solar panel. And that gave us the advantage to get a lot more energy than the rest and to lose less energy than the rest. So that combined makes a winning team. The weather conditions this year, they are almost killing because they're at the end of the race. You know, if you get bad weather in the beginning of the race, you can still compensate. But at the end of the race, everybody goes for everything. And so your batteries are low and, and, and it, is, uh, it was a very difficult race in the last two days. I used to say uh, the World Solar Challenge is like a stimulus for young people to bring the best out of them. And uh, what is so fantastic that if you then see the result, that, that, that is basically a proof, a demonstration for the hope you can have in young people. You will definitely see the new solar team in 2015. Uh, our university is fully behind us and uh, the Netherlands as a country is very proud of the project and the achievements in it. I wish all the other teams uh, good luck in, uh, in designing their car for the next uh, Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. But I'm hoping that we will again be one step ahead and come with new innovations that the other teams haven't heard of at all yet. Well, some really happy crews there and why not? What a wonderful achievement to excel in what's been a 3,000 kilometre plus journey. And this morning, plenty of drama for Team Tokai. When they were 2,940 k's through the race, they actually ran out of juice and had to recharge their battery. Team Twente rounded out the top three. In the Michelin Cruiser class, Uni of New South Wales are leading the field. Powercore Sun Cruiser in second, followed by Eindhoven. And Tracy Kotsia was amongst all the action in Cooper Pedy when the teams took off this morning. With the results of the Challenger class in, all eyes now rest on the tightly contested Cruiser class. They started their day in Cooper PD and woke up to blustery conditions and some light cloud cover. With just minutes separating the first three teams, person kilometres were at the forefront of today's strategy. The University of New South Wales Solar Racing Team were first to leave the control point after a great run in the sun yesterday. Their strategy is to travel the whole distance with just a driver and today was no different. Meanwhile, Bochum were fully loaded with three people and Eindhoven had opted to drive with just two. With the wind gusting at speeds of up to 59 kilometres per hour, driving conditions out of Cuba PD were challenging. We caught up with all three teams at the Glendamo control stop, 261 kilometres into today's journey, to find out how the team's strategies were playing out. We believe we've got a few advantages here and there. Uh, our strategy guy is done his thesis on it and it's working out really well. Um, the car's performing better and better every day, so we just potentially don't even care where everyone else is and just go with what we can do. You left Kubapedi with three team members this morning. Why did you choose to run fully loaded? Uh, because we uh, think it's the best tactic. You've been running with four passengers for most of the journey and you're back to two at the moment, why is that? That's true indeed, uh, that's mostly because of the weather, also the sun is a bit more of a, yeah, way less than uh, before, so therefore we've chosen to go ahead with two persons, just to make sure we can, uh, yeah, we will be able to get a, a bit better time than, uh, than the other teams. We've got winds gusting at 59 kilometres per hour today, it must make pretty tricky driving. 
Oh, for about the first three hours, it's okay, you can manage it. We've got some nice telltales on the windscreen, but after about four, you're starting to fatigue a little bit. So, um, yeah, getting some food in helps. We we're still uh, able to cope with uh, the speeds of uh, both Bochum and SunSwift. We're just uh, 30 minutes behind. Um, so, yeah, we're doing quite well. Does the wind have an effect on how much power the car is using? Uh, yes, it costs uh, much more energy to drive to a lower speed. With the cloudy conditions, how's your battery charge today? Um, the battery charge was full when we started. I thought it was now about 70%, so we're still going quite well. However, we, uh, yeah, the normal uh, income of the solar panel is about uh, two-thirds of the, what it should be when it's sunny. Can you make it to Adelaide first? Yes. We drive uh, 70 km per hour, uh, must the strategy uh, make. <laughs> Yeah, of course, because that's uh, always the coolest part, so uh, let's hope we can do that. If we're able to do that, then we know for sure that we are uh, number one. Uh, otherwise, we have to wait until the rest uh, come in and see how many passengers they take with us. So with all three teams confident of getting to Adelaide first and the subjective element of practicality being judged there, this all-new cruiser class has added an exciting dimension to the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. And business as usual in the GoPro Adventure class, Team Aurora left first this morning followed by the rest of the field. Well, that's it for day five. Now, don't forget to join us tomorrow. We'll bring you all the final results from the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, including that fascinating battle that's playing out in the Michelin Cruiser class. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow.